Is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe worth it if you already own the original game on the Wii U? Or is this nothing more than a cash grab? Nintendo's next Mario Kart title isn't brand spanking new, but instead a port of Mario Kart 8 from the Wii U. In case you don't know what a Wii U is, well, it's basically a Switch, but not as cool or handy, and like seven people bought one. <laughs> but jokes aside, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has a robust amount of content. It's one of the greatest values you could possibly get on the Switch to this day. With this game, you get a whopping 48 tracks, 42 characters not including alternate costumes, and 8 brand new battle mode tracks. One surprising feature is that almost every character is unlocked from the beginning. The only thing you unlock are carts, wheels, and glider parts. You pursue this by collecting coins which is done by playing the single player, online, or battle mode. The only secret character you can unlock is Gold Mario, which can be accomplished by earning first place in all 12 cups in 200cc mode. Now, whether or not it's worth unlocking an alternate costume is really up to you. I personally found it to be a pain considering 200cc doesn't work well with most courses, but I digress. Aside from that small dud, the other new characters are great additions. Fans have been clamoring for King Boo and Dry Bones, and we also finally have Bowser Jr., which is hilarious considering all seven of the Koopa Kids were in the original game. The most interesting new characters, though, are Inkling Girl and Boy from Splatoon. They are an extremely welcome addition, and I love that they also have alternate costume swaps, which references the game they come from. While the core game may look the same at first glance, there's quite a few small changes that freshen up the races. One of the most notable differences is the ability to hold two items. And no, you don't have to run through a double item box, simply driving through two single item boxes works as well. This is appreciated seeing how in the original game, it was annoying being in first or second place and constantly getting coins which can't defend you from shells or bananas. Now that you can hold two items, it's less likely that you'll be stuck with a coin. However, now that everyone can hold more items, races are even more hectic and crazy. With my time playing, it wasn't uncommon to get hit with two red shells in a row from the same person, or see four or five or six green shells bouncing around the course at once. There is a lot more obstacles to avoid. And plus, if you're holding two items, unfortunately you can't swap between them. So if you have a coin in your second slot, you basically just have one item to work with. Overall though, I'm really glad we can hold two items like in most previous Mario Kart titles. Another new, small addition is a third drift boost option, or purple sparks. In case you don't know the advantage to drifting, holding one can allow you to get a mini speed boost. The back of your wheels will first create blue sparks, then orange, and new to this game, purple. Building up purple sparks takes an extremely long time, regardless of what speed you're playing at. You do get a huge boost out of it, but it's very rare that you'll be able to pull it off. So it really doesn't change the game that much, but it's still a fun little future. On top of that, there's a couple new handicap options called Smart Steering and Auto Accelerate. Smart Steering won't let you touch any outside boundaries, and Auto Acceleration is... Well, pretty self-explanatory. For new Mario Kart players, these handicaps will be great for helping them learn how to play the game. What's hilarious is that turning on both of these means that if you really wanted to, you don't need to drive at all. Your character has the ability to drive on his own. There's also two new items for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And when I say that, I mean returning favorites. One of these is the Boo item, which is pretty neat seeing as we haven't seen this item since Mario Kart DS. I did notice that there were a few races where the Boo spawned literally five or six times, but outside of that, I'm extremely happy to see this one return. The Feather has also made a comeback, but is exclusive to battle mode, so we'll talk about that later on. Outside of that, the core gameplay is pretty much the same. Playing online is almost identical to the original game as well. You can still play with people all around the world, with friends, and you can set up tournaments. However, there's one key feature that was implemented that makes playing online a thousand times better. In between matches, you can finally swap out your character and cart. It's amazing that it took Nintendo over a decade to add such a basic component to online play, but hey, 
It's here now. I haven't played too many online matches, but from what I've experienced, the game plays as smoothly as it did in the original. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test wireless play for this review, simply because I don't know anybody around me that got the game early, let alone owns a Switch yet. Amiibo compatibility is back too. Scanning in certain amiibo gives your Mii character suits based on that character. There have been several new amiibo to come out since the original Mario Kart 8, but sadly, the only new suit is from Splatoon, and it's kind of lame looking too. I guess I was expecting the helmet to have the squid hair or something, I don't know. Even though this is such a minor complaint, I don't see why Nintendo couldn't have added costumes for characters like Waluigi, Daisy, Boo, and so on. And now we're at the point of this review that you're all truly interested in, the battle mode. Mario Kart 8's battle mode was extremely disappointing due to the lack of modes and the tracks being carbon copies from the main game. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there's now 5 game modes and 8 new tracks, 3 of those retro tracks. The most popular game mode, Balloon Battle, revolves around hitting other players with items to rid of their balloons. Like the newer Mario Kart titles, if you run out of balloons, you'll respawn on the track after a few seconds. Personally, I've always hated that you come back to the track after losing all your balloons. It kind of defeats the purpose of having them in the first place. And there's no way to turn off the time limit either. Obviously, having a time limit for online matches makes sense, but I should be able to turn it off for local play. What I'm basically saying here is I wish the rules were laid out more like in Mario Kart 64 and Double Dash. Aside from that, Balloon Battle is still a lot of fun to play and is what you'd expect. I mentioned earlier that the Feather is a Battle Mode exclusive item, and firstly, it's pretty shocking to even see this return considering it hasn't been in a Mario Kart title since the very first game on the Super Nintendo. The way it works in this game is you'll use the feather to jump over a character. This allows you to steal a balloon from someone else. It's hard to do, but nabbing a balloon is extremely satisfying. There's also Shine Thief. The objective is to collect and hold the Big Shine for 20 seconds. Shine Thief kind of reminds me of Capture the Flag, and it's a lot of fun. This mode can get really intense if a bunch of racers only need to hold the Shine for a few seconds to win. It's easily one of my favorites. Next is Coin Runners. The goal is to collect the most coins, as I'm sure you could have guessed by the title. You can also attack others with items, and yes, this causes them to lose coins. Even more satisfying is using the feather or mushroom to steal coins. That's because, in most cases, hitting a player with an item causes their coins to scatter around, but with a feather or mushroom, the coins just go right to you. And next is a fan favorite, bob ohm Blast. If you played bob ohm Blast in Mario Kart Double Dash, you know how it works already. All the items are now bombs, and you basically just go all Michael Bay to win. What's interesting is the way you control bob ohms is different in this mode compared to the rest of the game. So instead of just throwing it and it goes a certain distance, in bob ohm Blast, holding the throw button determines how far you'll throw the bomb. I won't lie though, this mode isn't nearly as fun as it was in Double Dash simply because there's too many racers on the track. There's way too much mayhem. That's not to say bob on Blast isn't fun, but don't expect a replica of how it plays in Double Dash. And finally, there's a brand new mode called Renegade Roundup, or Cops and Robbers for simplicity's sake. One team plays the cops with piranha plants. The other team, who we'll call the robbers, tries to avoid them. If a cop gets close to the robber, the piranha plant eats them and they end up in jail. The cop's objective is to get all the robbers in jail, while the robbers want to stay out of jail until the timer runs out. However, the robbers can break their pals out by driving through the key icon underneath each cell. It's somewhat complicated for a Mario Kart game, but once you understand how it works, this mode is also very rewarding. The battle mode tracks themselves are extremely varied in size, themes, and general layout. My personal favorite track has to be Urchin Underpass. It's pretty neat seeing a Splatoon map in a Mario Kart game. The only map I wasn't too fond of was Battle Stadium. This map was kind of reminiscent of the so-called battle tracks that the original game had. 
there's a lot of narrow roads and it can be really hard to find players. Lunar Colony is also really cool considering you're in anti-gravity the entire time. The music in these tracks are fantastic too. I geeked so hard when I heard the remix of Luigi's Mansion from Mario Kart DS in the Luigi's Mansion track. So is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe worth buying? Well, if you've never played the original game before, I couldn't recommend this enough. The amount of content you get for $60 is unbelievable. It's one of the biggest and best Mario Kart games to date. But what if you already bought the game on the Wii U? Well, if you're still playing it on the Wii U and still enjoy it, I would say this is for you too. The small gameplay tweaks and new battle mode tracks are really refreshing and are well worth the price, especially if you didn't purchase the DLC originally. Now, if you've already played Mario Kart 8 but haven't played it in months and didn't enjoy it that much, then you might be disappointed with this. And with that, thank you for watching my review and I hope you learned something. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and leave a comment and let me know if you're getting this game. Or if you have it already, what do you think of it? Thanks so much for watching guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.